Hi everyone. This little gem is a mangrove snake. This is actually Boega dendrophila melanota. So this is the largest of all the mangrove snakes, the cat eye snakes. But I had the pleasant experience, huh, I do say that in quotes, of actually allowing one of these guys to bite me to be a test guinea pig to actually see what's it like? How bad is this? Because this is a rear fang snake. But, you know, is the venom, how dangerous is it, is it to us? And uh, I love this species. I have a lot of them and I find them very interesting. So let's go and uh, hear about what actually hey, happened. Hey, my little cupcakes. We have the dreaded mangrove snake. And as I look deep into the book of learning, I am going to tell you all about the dreaded mangrove snake. This heavy bodied snake is slightly compressed from side to side so it can, yeah, we already know that. It does look terrifying. How come you're not trying, oh look, ooh, it might get me. But as we learn about the dreaded mangrove snake, we know that this snake is rear fanged. But unlike many other venomous species, it does not have a pressurized venom delivery. And you can also see that where it comes from, from tropical Asia and such, it often predates on little boys that are going down the rivers in little dugaloos, and you look dreadfully scary. Oh no, he's gonna eat my finger. So, back to this. Look, there, oh, this is something that I can relate to. The dreaded mangrove snake bite. Although aggressive in the wild, the mangrove snake is easily tamed by experts. It is one of the species that snake charmers, blah, 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 put them in the basket. Well, we're not going to put you in a basket, but what can we look at? Don't be deceived by the creature's be giliating beauty, beguiling, whatever the hell that means. It's glittering black and gold yellow scales may invite a closer look, but it brings nothing but pain and suffering. Oh my goodness. The mangrove snake likes to sunshine and bask where it waits for little people to go along in the little bugaloos and then it bites them. Now we're gonna talk all about what is it like to actually get bitten by one of these horrifically horrible rear fangs venomous creatures and let's see how terrible it is you know you might even say i might have a hard time speaking okay i'm gonna tell you more about being bit by a mangrove snake but don't forget that it's yellow and pain and suffering well is that real well i'm gonna tell you about it <laughs> i wanted to make an interesting thumbnail so i <laughs> I'm trying to do will it bite video, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny's watching me through the thing. He's like, oh my God, you're getting chewed on. I'm that. like, yeah, I'm like, I'm going to make an interesting thumbnail. I'm going to let this mangrove snake bite me and chew on me. <laughs> Hopefully I got some kind of picture. So I don't want him to bite my arm now. So what I'm doing is I'm twirling around. So it was time to make a video. So, oh, look at you. Gorgeous. Hi. Oh. It's like I've got a taste for blood. So, guys, even though this is a snake bite, this is nothing. This is like a this is like a joke to me. I'm just showing you. But <laughs> he wanted me, <laughs> right, Johnny? <laughs> ah! I give you guys, yeah. Oh, yeah. Horrible. Are you done? Doing a video just kind of talking about getting bit and how not to get bit by your snake and actually reading the behaviors of the snake. And one snake I knew that would always wants to bite me is one snake I've never tried to make friends with and that happens to be a mangrove snake. So that's Boega dendrophila. And I could always count on him. So I'm kind of messing around with him, doing you know stuff on the camera, just very, very nonchalant. And, and he bites me. And this time, instead of you know warding off his bite I let him actually chew on me. He initially bit me here and he chewed for a bit. And uh, I don't know if that, I don't, I don't really think that's inv envenomation. He was chewing on me pretty good, but he was pushing against my arm and I just let him go. 
and I let him bite me. And he bit me for a couple minutes and he was chewing and he's really, you could just see him working his shots. Remember, mangrove snakes are considered venomous, just like a hognose snake or false water cobra, or even a garter snake. Remember, venom is just a modified saliva and how its uh, targeted prey would actually react. Well, it's not a really good defense. The mangrove snake acts crazy, acts gnarly and scary. That's its defense. The biting is actually just to secure amphibians and, and you know, lizards and frogs and even probably fish and, and whatnot. So anyway, so it bit me probably an hour and a half ago. And uh, initially, only thing I noticed was some bleeding and it, you know, is chewing on me really good. It's not a pressurized venom delivery system. So they are rear fanged. So remember that. So it's, they really have to kind of really chew on you. So if you keep mangrove snakes, you can easily manage them without ever getting envenomated because you have to actually let the animal sit there and grind on you and just chew, chew, chew. But I let him do that. And this is like the first time I've ever really experience that other than just little, you know, very, very just uh, defensive, defensive bites. So I noticed initially a fair bit of bleeding and then it finally clotted. And um, now I've noticed some swelling and the swelling probably occurred like 45 minutes in. I could definitely feel tingling of it knowing that like I had been maybe stung. And like I said, I'm allergic to yellow jackets, but I've developed some resistance. So I don't have a clue. How I react to this. I, I don't regard any of this as anything worrisome whatsoever. Uh, but when I did get bit by a Western hog nose, he bit me on my finger and within, he was chewing on it. So he definitely wanted to eat. Within a few minutes, I could feel it. I could feel like, Ooh, that's tingly. You could feel something was wrong. And that is just, it's saliva, which is kind of like, you know, it's a venom uh, in this case. And within 20 minutes, it was definitely, I felt like I got stung. I was noticing swelling and my thumb became immobilized. I mean, just, you know, just from the edema and the swelling. And, you know, long after the snake was back in its cage, you know, I just laughed at the whole thing and we should. But my thumb stiffened up and everything like that. So I had a bit of a reaction and I'm anticipating, you know, just a little bit of reaction, like right here, just localized swelling. So I wanted to document what it is actually like to sustain a boega bite. Uh, and so this is just me doing this and uh, you know, it's education. All right, there'll be more to come if I live. All right, so it is, so it's like a day and a half. My arm is swelled up as much as it can be especially if we compare it to, how do I hold this? I'm like Popeye. So I think the next thing, of course he's, so one thing I do want to point out. So I've, I'm allergic to yellow jackets and white face hornets or bald face hornets and I swell up but I don't have this necrosis. And in theory, mangrove snakes have cytotoxin, neurotoxin, and hemotoxin. As slight as it is, I'm definitely seeing the difference. You can see all of the bruising. Um, my arm doesn't particularly hurt too much other than it aches, so I can take some Tylenol, and that manages it. It doesn't, you know, it's stiff. So that's very interesting. So I'm hoping like the swelling, I've had enough of this and I'm hoping in the morning the swelling is going to start dissipating. That's where my arm actually wants to hang. So I can't, I don't want to straighten it out. All right, more to come. All right, so this is 48 hours. So I can't really see any of this, but so yeah, so in the venom, there is definite 
uh, tissue damage. Uh, swelling is starting to kind of dissipate. So is this cytotoxin that's damaging. Um, aches a little bit, but I mean, this is up to two and a half minutes of envenomation, which normally you would easily be able to escape. So I pushed it to the worst degree. All right, so we're not 48 hours, but you can see all the bruising. And remember, I was bit right, I can't even point it up. There's my lower bite right on my wrist, but the upper one is where I really let it go. Really, really crazy. Here's the first bite, and that was just for like half a minute. That's the second bite. Can't even see like the back. My arm is all, it's still swollen, says the kitties. All right, guys, my conclusion with the mangrove snake bite. So remember, I allowed this snake to bite me. I didn't really have a lot of information actually. What is the extent, like how bad is the venom and whatnot. So letting the animal truly envenomate me for a very long period of time and actually what happened. What is my conclusion? Well, my conclusion is it was worse than I expected uh, in the, the level of just some trauma that it did. It caused my whole arm to swell up where I didn't have full mobility. Did it make me sick? No. Did it give me a headache? No. Did it cause me real pain and suffering? No. It did make me uncomfortable. And I will tell you, the, the, biggest, the biggest worry I had was, like once I was in two days in, my whole arm was pretty swollen and I was getting these all these horrible red streaks and all sorts of bruising and bleeding under the skin. And then I thought it was going to rupture. So if you look at a really bad necrotic snake bite from a really nasty uh, hemotoxin, which is destroying the red blood cells or cytotoxin, which just destroys cells in general, just melting flesh. So I was getting all these things and I really was like, okay, how mad is this going to get? Like, is, is this going to is this gonna cause my skin to rupture? And of course, you know, your skin is a whole organ right there in itself. So how far did I take the damage to this, this organ? And that was my worry. So I was worried that it was going to just start rupturing and have necroses. Uh, it didn't happen. So that was the good thing. So once the, I don't know, it was a couple nights in, uh, so it was uh, maybe three or four days and, and it started kind of going down and I was sure that it wasn't just going to continue. It never went into my lymphatic system. It didn't go here, but it was from here to my wrist. Um, the day I got bit, which was a Wednesday, I went, I was at the gym and I did legs and I, the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day, my legs sucked. I felt like... I'd run a marathon, they were really weak. And I think either the venom had something to do with it or that my body was working on repairing my arm, that it took all of its energy and put it into that. But I think what we have is we have a three-pronged attack from the, the mangrove snake venom. And um, you know I don't have expertise in this, but uh, we have like a hemotoxin, a neurotoxin, and a cytotoxin, very, very small. So remember, saliva, it's, this is saliva, and this is the Duvernay's gland. The Duvernay's gland. I always get that one wrong. So the Duvernay's gland is kind of like in lieu of a venom gland. So something like a hognose snake, a garter snake. Some of these, you know, different animals have this gland that uh, secretes like a saliva, and the saliva was just you know modified proteins, which you know can cause some lethality or cause some kind of damage to their targeted food item. 
So mangrove snakes might eat birds and lizards. And so that venom is probably good at targeting their prey species and immobilizing it. Uh, plus it caused, you know, this, this tissue trauma. So there was no necrosis. There was massive edema. We can call it cellulitis. My elbow got so huge. So this is, I am 90 days. You can still see a little bit of trauma right, right here. Uh, so one thing it did do after the swelling went down, my arm became hypersensitive. So it was like, all right. So if I could just put my arm just sitting here, even now it kind of, I don't really like it, but this was very uncomfortable. And I think there was like some bleeding under the skin here. So it was very, very bruised and my whole arm just super sensitive. And where I got bit, so this is the first site. So this was under a minute. It was, I don't know, like 30, 40 seconds. I was goofing around. And that first bite actually, at maybe 30 or 40 seconds, there was some envenomation there. It wasn't really bad. So if that was the extent of the bite, that really wouldn't have been bad at all. But this one, you know, good two and a half minutes, just chewing and slobbering. And it created like a hard area. And actually the hard area is kind of going away. I've been rubbing it out and just sitting here rubbing all the stuff out. So it's absolutely worse than a hornet sting because a hornet sting you get, if you're allergic to it, you can get massive edema and, um, but you didn't have, you don't have this like tissue trauma. So the, maybe the cytotoxin caused a lot of cellular, uh, breakdown, cell lacing, just like some kind of destruction. And my, my arm has repaired. So nine days later, it's, I, I feel, I feel pretty good. I never lost like really the strength, but you know, you could see by the, the swelling of my arm, it was really hard to kind of capture it on film, but people that could see it were like, wow. So I know this was a long video, but I hope we gain something out of this. So when you're keeping dendrophila or mangrove snakes, boega, dendrophila, melanota, all the different synodons and all different stuff like that, be respectful of their uh, ability, the, the venom, but you really have to kind of chew on you. And it's very easy to manage these snakes. Just don't allow them to chew on you very long. A little quick chew, like this one was really nothing, you know, 30 seconds or whatever, but the two and a half minutes, showed the full extent and the venom is, I'm not going to sit here and make light of it and saying, you know, it's nothing because it did do this thing. And I really, for a week, it was, you know, you know, just noticeable, you know, not pain, but it was not a fun experience. Uh, I just think I got the full envenomation, but I got, you know, the pain and suffering that we're talking about in the beginning of the video that I was kind of joking with, cause you got to make light of this. Uh, I didn't really, you know, there's some discomfort. Yeah, there's like an ache. My arm was aching. So let's let's be respectful of Boega. Don't let them chew on you, but it's very, very easy to manage them. Just don't let them kind of chew into you. And hopefully my experience helps the herp world, the herpetoculture world, and just kind of just tells us, you know, that it's not really a good idea. Uh, and I think that maybe I'm a little bit more sensitive, maybe, because of yellow jacket uh, toxicity and bald face hornet toxicity, but I really wanted to find out, and I'm not going to do it again. I don't. I don't think I need to do that. But it was. Uh, it was really interesting, and I, there's really no. There's no nothing. So please comment. Tell me what you're actually thinking. And I do really want to do a Patreon uh, video. Thank you guys all for your support. And if you're watching this and you're not liking or subscribing. I know I suck, but let's pretend you guys are awesome. Oh, I want to point out, don't forget, I have a rodent pro code and I have a reptile basics. So reptile basics is caging, racking, all sorts of husbandry tools. Reptile basics has all sorts of cool things. So now I'm able to give you my 10% discount. It's in my details in my description on this video, as well as the rodent pro 10% discount. It's the same code, but I'm not going to get it wrong. So look in my description and make sure you use it, but check out reptile basics. And of course we all love rodent pro and you guys are awesome. I can't wait to see your comments. Bye guys.